Hopefully I'm coming through. Thank you, Ms. Wicked Wolf. Hope folks are doing well. Uh, Carolyn is um, is doing a little better. She's not feeling up for um, extended um, time at the computer, i.e. doing a mod during a stream. So she won't be joining us today, but um, she's doing okay. She's focusing on getting better and that's what she should be doing. Thank you for asking, though. Thoughts on Doctor Who drama? Tune in tomorrow. Already shot a video on it. I will not be bogging down today's stream in that because I already expelled that nonsense from my body in front of a camera. And it has been recorded. It needs to be edited. Ugh. Ugh. Yes, absolutely. Love for Carolyn. Thank you, Gozer. That's really... It's really wonderful from you. I'll be sure to tell her that. Uh, but yeah. I'll have a video about the Doctor Who drama out tomorrow. Food for thought. Does the existence of extra virgin olive oil imply that there's an extra slutty olive oil option? I'm not sure it does. It does imply that there's gradations of uh, being a virgin, though which I would like some definitions on that, please. Do I like bacon? I like it well enough. I'm not, um, I'm not bowled over by it the way a lot of people are. I'm not obsessed with it. Like, it's nice. It's good as an, as an add-in to other stuff. By itself, honestly, it's a little much. Do I believe in the Great Pumpkin? I don't like to share my beliefs. I find that uh, to be highly personal. I'm going to keep that to myself. Thank you kindly. I watched the Twilight Zone episode with Julie Newmar as the devil today. I don't think I've seen that one. Hmm. I've, I've been jumping all over classic Twilight Zone. I don't think I've gotten to that one yet. Bowling for bacon? No. Bowling for soup. I used to like that band. <laughs> Cause she's the girl all the bad guys want. Uh, have you heard about the plan but canceled Dark Two animated series from the early 90s? Um, I've heard of it. It's, I mean, like, I tend to not find a ton of, like, it, it's, it's rare that something that did not happen really kind of sparks my interest. Like, as a factoid, oh, okay. Then my brain just kind of moves on. Um, I'm sure it's a lovely video, though. Harbo Holmes, um, Harbo Holmes does good stuff. So I'm sure it's a good video. Uh, but no, I haven't seen it. Favorite slasher villain? I'm really not too big on slashers. I mean, I guess, I guess Ghostface by default. But see, here's the thing. If Ghostface is your favorite movie slasher, do you have to specify which one? Or I suppose which two, since most of them are pairs. Because otherwise, you're just basically saying, this mask is my favorite. Because they're not all the same people. Hmm. Found a new voice actor for Mario. Yep, yeah, I heard about that. Here we go. Well, there's the medieval definition of virgin, which is basically synonymous with unmarried. Ah, uh, yes. Well, then, by that defini definition, I have reacquired my virginity in recent years. <laughs> uh, that is a topic I will not be touching at all in any way, shape, or form, Ms. Wicked Wolf. Not because I don't have thoughts, not because I don't have opinions, but because it is an atomic bomb of a topic, and I do not have the spoons 
to process and verbalize, nor do I have, I, and even less do I have the spoons to deal with everything that would happen if I were to publicly state my feelings. I do not have it in me to deal with that. That is an off limits topic, please. For the sake of my sanity, if nothing else. But I wonder how they determine if olives are virgins. Do they make them sign a purity pledge? Signing a purity pledge is pretty much a guarantee you won't be a virgin within a few years. You can check the statistics on that one. Does bowling produce soup? Good grief. So many, does this imply this? It's the theme of the evening, apparently. Um, does bowling for soup imply you are bowling for the reward of soup or are bowling on the behalf of soup? I feel like you are stepping in to bowl for soup because uh, soup is just having a hard time right now and can't quite can't quite get its head in the game and and you're just gonna be a good friend to soup. You're just gonna you're gonna step in and you're gonna be that good friend and be there and bowl for soup. Uh, let's see. That joke I pointed out to you that's ableist. Do you think Russell D. Davies is the kind of person who'd not get defensive if you pointed out a problematic joke uh, through on his watch? I have no idea. I don't know the man. And like, it, here's the thing. There are people who might, who might under other circumstances be amenable to a suggestion, but either who it's coming from or how it's delivered throws things off. I don't, like, there are definitely some people out there who do not take criticism well. Like, that I'll definitely agree to. But, like, even people who, um, like, do take criticism well, it's it, it's hard to say. Like, and especially when it's, um, like, most likely fan critique and something that came later. I don't know. I didn't, yeah. Can I impersonate Shrek? I don't know. I haven't really tried. Um, I'm sure my Scottish accent can't be any worse than um, Mike Myers' is, 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 is. Actually, I don't know if that's a bad Scottish accent. I think it's a stereotypical typical? Typical Scottish accent. I'm not sure it's bad. Might not be. I don't know. <laughs> I am in no position to judge. Donkey! That's all you're getting. Which comic book character would I want to voice? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. That, ooh. Um, that is a good question. I'm trying to think. Um, hold on, something's beeping. I'm trying to figure out if it's something outside or if it's something in my house. It has stopped. So I'm going to assume it was something outside. Um, huh. I, my brain is stumbling on this one, but it's a good question. I, I, I want to have an answer. Ah, um, I don't know. I don't know. Wally West? He'd be fun. They said it was impossible, but I did. I completed all of Classic Who. Oh, no, it's possible. I don't know anyone who said it is impossible, but... Um, it's a lot. Worst ghost face was from the worst entry. Long Lost Brother and Scream 3, Daytime Soap Territory. I, Scream 3 was the last one I saw. It was okay. It's fine. First one's real good, still. Have you ever heard of a TV show called Only Murders in the Building? I have, and I have not watched it because it's on Apple TV, which I don't have and will not pay for. Uh, do, 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 do. I still have soup in the fridge. Might toast some bread and heat it up. 
There you go. That, that's being supportive of soup. How was your Friday the 13th this uh, October? Anything unlucky or um, spoopy happen? Uh, no, not really. I didn't really do much uh, on Friday, truth be told. I had a very nice, relaxed day with one of my partners, and that was lovely. That was my Friday the 13th. Night before that, I went and saw Lorena McKennett in concert. She's amazing, still. Her voice has barely changed in 30 years. It's astounding. What is my favorite soup? Kind of mood dependent. Sometimes uh, clam chowder, sometimes French onion. Those are usually be the top two contenders, I think. I do like a good soup in general. Can I do a Rod Serling impression? Uh, I feel I feel like I would need I need to have something to read because I don't think because I'd I'd have to try and think of the kind of things he'd say and also capture the voice and I don't think I can do both at once if I can even do one or the other. Um, hang on a second. Uh, uh. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition. It lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the destination of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. That's not great. That wasn't great. I'll let it go at that, though. The part of the thing is he has no upper lip. I don't know if you ever noticed that. <laughs> Um, have I ever been in an escape room once as a uh, team building exercise back when I still had the day job? Oof. I'm Scottish and never thought Shrek was supposed to be Scottish. Oh, I guess that answers that question then, doesn't it? <laughs> Navy bean soup. Never had that one. Has my roof been fixed yet? I mean, it, it wasn't broken. It just needed to be redone before it started breaking. Um, the, excuse me. No, they're not done yet. Hopefully they'll be done this week. Been a bit distant from the MCU recently. Is Loki season two worth the watch? I mean, we're only two episodes in, but so far, yeah, so far it's pretty good. I'm enjoying it. Am I going to play the dark side, the, the second dark side detective game? I actually already have. Most of it, anyways. Some of it I did on stream, some of it I didn't. I'm not sure I'm going to do a review of it because I don't think I'd have anything to say that was that different than my first video, and it would basically amount to... So, you remember what I said about the first one? More of that. So... If you liked it the first time and wanted more, get it. It's good. I like Ghostface because there's no supernatural stuff, just a bunch of losers and Karens being losers and Karens with knives. Yeah. Tomato soup rules. I don't get, like, speaking of someone who loves tomatoes, like, broadly speaking, I'll just slice up a tomato and, and, and eat it. But, like, I don't get tomato soup. I don't get it. It's just like, what is this? This is nothing. This is warm ketchup. What are we doing? This is broccoli cheese erasure, and I won't stand for it. I never said no other soups existed besides clam chowder and French onion. I just gave my preferences. So, I saw you and Jesse got to checkmate in The Prisoner. Peter Weingart is my favorite, number two. With the chess metaphor, I think that episode does the master manipulator trope well. That was a good one. Like, that show's just good. I am not looking forward to getting to the finale and trying to explain what the hell happens in it. It's... Ah! Uh, let me see here. Sorry, give me a second. Hmm. 
That's a bad. Can you go back and respond to the questions from me? I missed. Actually, every content supporter only responded to me, so I have constant validation. Um, so if I recall, your question was about, do I think uh, Russell T. Davies would um, accept criticism? Like, if he was told something in his script was ableist? Like, he might. I don't know, though. I don't know the guy. Like, even people who are receptive to criticism, it can still go sour depending on who's providing it and um, what manner it's being provided in. So... I don't know. It's not a question I'm really comfortable a a answering because it you're basically asking me to do a personality assessment on someone I don't know, and I'm not comfortable with that. If I heard the new Doctor Who theme and 15th Doctor themes, I have. Because, the, because talking about that is considered promotional material as opposed to like proper review of the stuff itself with the strike, still unresolved, I have no opinion. If soup is liquid, doesn't that imply that it is a drink and not a food? Well, no. Because it is not only a liquid. It is a liquid consisting of solids. Whether they be in diced up pieces or blended to mix in, it is not liquid alone. Tarot Staller, thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate that. Oh, reminder, you get a little heart from me. And it's what guarantees that I'll get your question, even though I try and keep up with the chat. Regardless, any plans for Halloween? My D&D group is doing a spoopy-themed campaign session. Uh, that night took off from work especially for it. Also, hi. Hi to you, too. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to tail behind my kiddo <laughs> as, um, as they do their trick-or-treat thing So with friends. So... I'll be very superfluous, but that's what I'll be doing. Have I ever been to a cat cafe? No. I found Texas Chainsaw Massacre boring AF. Am I the only one? I don't know, because I've actually never seen any of those. Not the originals, not the remakes, not the sequels, none of it. Like, I know about it. But, yeah, no, I don't have an opinion. I've never seen the thing. Is Quill and Sword done? No, Ms. Wicked Wolf. We we were gone for a little bit because like there was one night where some people were sick and then one of the sessions was going to be on Stephen's birthday. And, you know, we wanted to let the guy have his birthday. It'll be back. Uh, it's probably going to be wrapping up in the not so distant future, at least this campaign. But no, it's not done. I actually turned 13 when Friday the 13th uh, fell in my <laughs> birth month. However, my birthday is on the 6th, so I had a week off of having a 13th birthday on Friday the 13th. That, it's happened to somebody, I'm sure. I've not seen it yet, but is the Loki episode title Breaking Brad a reference to the show or the phrase Breaking Bad? It is, it is a pun using the name Breaking Bad, but it is but what it is more directly referencing is stuff that goes on in the show. It is both. As any good pun should be. Anyone watching Fall of the House of Usher? Oh, is that now out? I gotta decide if I'm gonna get to that or not. I don't Ah, it's too much stuff. Good grief. Do I like Fanta soda? No, I don't like any soda. I I don't like soda. <laughs> what about stone soup? Oh, see, now we're getting to folklore. That's a whole different thing. Sorry, I genuinely meant that as a self-deprecating uh, joke. I didn't want you, actually want you to go back. Oh, don't worry about it, 255. It wasn't a problem. No sweat. Do I like slow 90s love belts? No! No, they're boring! Like... Some of them, if if they go big enough, like I don't mind my heart will go on because it goes huge, huge and bombastic. Most of them don't have the cojones to do that. They're just boring and dull. Yeah. 
a lot of good music in the 90s. Ballads, not so much. I mean, ballads are, are a tough thing to do well at the best of times. Which doctor do you enjoy cosplaying the most? Honestly, just the cosplay? Probably the 13th. Now, granted, I'm slightly biased to the fact that my suit for the 10th Doctor doesn't fit properly anymore. Um, so I'm slightly biased in that those are my two... My two most accurate cosplays are 10th Doctor and 13th Doctor. And the suit doesn't really fit for 13th Doctor. To be fair, the jacket doesn't really fit... The suit doesn't really fit for 10th Doctor. To be fair, the jacket for 13th Doctor doesn't really fit anymore either. But it's left open, so it's less noticeable. <clears throat> Tara Stoller coming back with the with the deep philosophical questions. If soup isn't a drink because it has solids, does that mean boba tea is food? Ooh. After this, we'll tackle whether or not a hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> uh, arguably, yes. Wait, isn't the strike over? The writer's strike is. The actor's strike is not. Saw this channel where they review sci-fi ships. They interviewed a guy who uh, designed CG ships for Trek, and he was like, it was 20 years ago, I don't remember. Why would you do that interview? Well, if he doesn't have anything else going on. Hmm. I mean, I, I think that, that, honestly, I would kind of blame the podcasters be like, did you do like a preliminary? Like, we'd like to talk about this in specific. Do you have thoughts you want to share? And if he comes back going, well, I don't really remember much. Book a different guest. Boba tea is a menace. It's like drinking something with tadpoles in it. <laughs> Gauntlet is thrown. Ah. Uh. Who has the most obnoxious ads uh, among T-named Chinese companies, TikTok or Temu? If Temu is what I think it is, those are more annoying. Uh, have you heard the Eighth Doctor Big Finish, The Natural History of Fear? Nope, haven't heard that one. Uh, binging Follow the House of Usher right now. Flanagan's best work, in my humble opinion. Oh, I might have to check it out then. Now, I haven't seen all of his stuff. Actually, the only one I've seen is Haunting of Bly Manor, which I liked a lot. I couldn't get through Haunting of Hill House because it was childhood trauma the show, and I hit my limit, and I just haven't I just haven't checked out his other stuff. Historical literary figure that the Doctor hasn't interacted with, you'd most like to see. None. Like, I'm I find the historicals way more interesting when he interacts with an event or a time period than with specific people. I'm really sick of him interacting with specific historical figures. Stop. It's boring and it reinforces the great people of history nonsense view that we have of history in the first place. And it just, it, it changes it from an exploration of a period of time into, hey, look, it's whoever the fuck. Stop! It's boring. And it's never been good. The classic era historicals are better because he rarely ran into anybody famous. Modern era, his, modern era historicals are mostly crap. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I'm drawing a line on this. Stop with the historicals if you're using it as a vehicle to meet a famous person. Stop it. They're all bad. How bad they are varies. Some are better than others. But they're not good. The best historicals do not feature the historical figures. They don't. There you go. There's your, there's your Doctor Who hot take for the day. <sighs> How will you cosplay as the new Doctor given that he seems not to have a permanent look? I don't know. Uh, partially because... Um, I, I can't afford to order anything like that right now. And I would say it will probably depend on what I can get a hold of. Because 
um, you know, going to places that, that stock this kind of stuff, they're going to stock one of a couple, uh, you know, maybe several different looks of his. And I'll just probably base it more off what's available than anything else. Uh, regarding the Sag Strike Studios, pulled some dirty shenanigans, then layered on some victim blaming. Yeah, it's not going to work. Nobody's on their freaking side. We're going into our Jaffa Cakes biscuits or cakes territory. <laughs> going back about 15 minutes, within a fantasy context, if you're reincarnated slash resurrected and you remember the previous life, does that count as resetting one's virginity? It depends on whether you believe virginity to be um, an act of the soul or of the body. If you believe that the engaging in the carnal act is an impact on your soul, then no, it doesn't reset your virginity. If you believe that it is strictly an impact and an effect on one's body, then yes. Saw the new trailer for Wonka. I haven't seen the latest one. I don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. What about Moon Pie? Neither Moon nor Pie. False advertising. Very disappointing. Supreme Omega. Thank you very much for the super chat. On animation, do you blame slash credit the success of Toy Story for the decline of hand-drawn 2D art in the late 90s and 2000s, or was it something else? Um, no, I blame Shrek. Because Toy Story, Pixar was a fluke until somebody else also had success with it. And once Shrek happened, Shrek was the movie that everyone went, I bet you we could make one of those. And Shrek messed things up in other ways, also leading to the um, uh, the, the stunt casting of Hollywood people instead of just, you know, getting voice actors. Um, 2D animation was kind of declining on its own uh, in the late 90s because they were greenlighting bad movies. Like, that that was just part of what was going on, too. So, like, 2D was stumbling all on its own. Toy Story comes out 3D, and it's like, ooh, but that's really expensive and really hard, and not a lot of companies can do it. And then DreamWorks did Shrek. Like, they did Ants before that, but it nobody remembered that one after a few years. But then Shrek was huge, and everyone was like, ooh, we could do that. So I blame Shrek if we're going to blame anybody. Our philosophy is, send a question in chat. It was full of typos. <laughs> no worries. I do that kind of nonsense all the dang time. Let me see if I can find it. Um, oh, here we go. An unearthly child losing distribution rights. Am I okay with RTD maybe remaking it? The general situation, I'm going to have a video out. Um, hopefully tomorrow on. It's shot. I got to edit it and get a thumbnail and all that. Um, the idea of RTD remaking it, uh, no. Short answer, no. No, I'm not. I'm not really okay with that. For the same reason I don't like the, the recasting of classic era um, doctors or companions. Uh, anyways, so like it just, it just feeds into something I'm already uncomfortable with. So my, my own take on that is no. Um, I think House of Usher might be worse than Hill House on that front. Trigger warnings for sure. Oh, well, then I might not get very far into it. So we'll see. I told you My Hero Academia is trying to do a redemption arc for a hero who was abusive towards his family and obsessed with surpassing uh, another been re-watching the show his interaction with his rival is so pathetic the other great the other hero greets him politely he reacts with hostility the other guy is like a bit rude but whatever okay yeah i mean sounds like this is just somebody with a lot of issues um have i seen has been hotel no i've only just started watching um hell of a boss so i don't have an opinion formed on that yet either so don't don't ask me yet uh, 
isn't Rosa a good historical figure? If you're asking, if you're asking me if I think that is a good episode, not especially, no. No. I I have a lot of issues with a lot of the historicals, and it's not always the same issues every time. It, some of them have their own slightly more unique issues. I don't really think Rosa is an especially good episode. I'm not going to slam it because I know it means a lot to a lot of people. and I'm not here to, to, you know, shame anybody for liking a thing, but I don't think it's especially good. Rosa Parks was an amazing figure. And for what Doctor Who does with historical figures, that was about as good as it was going to be. But that that's grading on a scale. That's grading on a curve that I don't feel like granting it today. The show as a whole, I mean. Uh, really sad that Elliot is leaving Tom Scott's channel. Oh! Oh, I missed that. Oh, I hadn't heard. Huh. For all the hard work on videos lately. Thank you, Hypno Amber. That's really nice. Erica, ooh, coming in generous. I that is really appreciated, genuinely. Hi Vera, I just started watching Good Omens after seeing your review. Excellent stuff. Thanks for the tip. I love the book and now the show. Book's good too. The it's funny though, because the bit that always stuck in my head the most of the entire book kind of got a nod in the second season, but it didn't didn't really properly happen. And that's when people are sneaking into the, I think it's the missile silo. And it's it's noted that nobody in there questions their presence. Because all the security is designed to keep people from being able to get in. So the assumption is, if they see you just in there, you must be authorized to be here. You wouldn't be here otherwise. Um, and it, there's this comparison made to Bees in a beehive that bees will will fight to the death to keep something from getting into the beehive. But if it gets in, they leave it alone because they assume it's supposed to be there. I don't know if that's actually true of bees, but I always did like that. They sold green ketchup to promote Shrek. I remember when purple ketchup thing was a thing for like a month. It was gross. Because, like, they sold it as it tastes just like ketchup, but it's weird colors. Like, no, the texture was all wrong. I want a historical where the celebrity is a uh, flat-out antagonist. Stop having the doctor gush about how important they are to history. I mean, like, maybe that'd be a slight shake-up. I'd rather they just leave them alone. Just stop. Just stop. Uh... Early thoughts on Hell of a Boss. It's, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> I've only seen the pilot so far. So, like, this is very early days. Are the 90s the worst time for solo love bouts? I think the 80s was way worse. I'm not going to get into a debate over which was worse. I'd say they were both pretty damn bad. I would say the 90s was mostly bad because they didn't improve on what the 80s did. It was the same kind of nonsense. Would I ever write a cookbook? Hell no! Absolutely not! Uh, mustache fam, love y'all. Like chicken? Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you for stopping in, Super Desi. Okay, so historical literary setting uh, you haven't seen yet. You most want to see the Doctor engage with. Um, I would like to see... Let's see here. Hmm. I'd, I'd like to see him um, engage with the uh, with the Moorish people, like Moorish Spain, or like really engage with it, not just like have it be a side note in something, like it was in uh, Can You Hear Me, which is an episode I like, but its historical setting was pointless. I gotta check the Discord. I shall be right back soon. 
because uh, reminder, that's the only other way to get uh, questions answered other than Super Chats is to ask them in the Discord, which is a Patreon exclusive perk. Uh, do or did you listen to much radio drama? If it's still a thing in the U.S., it still is in the U.K. It's not really that much of a thing over here. And no, I never really did listen to it. Uh, if Dreams of Fire, that's my novel for people who don't know, were to be adapted as a drama, any medium, and the writer was not you, who would your choice of dramatist be? Oh! I have no idea. I don't know. Shoot for the stars. Neil Gaiman. Give me a call. What attracts you to the idea of playing Puck so much? Puck is an archetype I enjoy a lot. Puck is a trickster. Puck is Bugs Bunny. He's Loki. He is there for fun and mischief. I just enjoy that. And it's really fun. And whereas I would never get the chance to play Loki, I could play Puck. I could get that role for that stage show. And oh. <sighs> and he's he's also got um, my favorite line in all of state uh, in all of uh, all of Shakespeare. So there's that. That's always to his benefit. Uh, let me see. It. Let me pull the full thing up so that because I sometimes I get the. Uh, I get the front part wrong. There we go. Shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. Like truer words, never spoken. What fools these mortals be. Indeed. Uh, the other day I rewatched Deep Space Nine episode where O'Brien gets arrested by some aliens and locked into a mental... Uh, simulation of jail for 20 years for 20 years subjective years that are only actually a few hours the episode is about him dealing with ptsd from this o'brien has a daughter who going by the actress's age was six or seven at the time he opts not to tell her he's having trouble do you think that's a right approach as a parent like in the episode he gets annoyed with her several times because she's pestering him to play with her and he can't handle it and she doesn't understand why if you had a six or seven year old would you tell them if you had ptsd like that this is a little elaborate for what if broadly speaking broadly speaking i have been open with my own child if some things were difficult for me or if i was having a bad day would i go into all the intricacies of ptsd and why i had it uh if i did no probably not not at that age but it would kind of give some context so it's not just confusing you know kids can be understanding of this is something that's difficult for me. Could we do something else or can you give me a minute? I finished that book about humans having uh, to move to the South Pole. Once in the South Pole, the humans created a race of ice-adapted human-animal hybrids to serve them who rise up against us. So we have to... Um, so we let them out of the underground lab slash prison where they were created. Do you think this trope is overused in sci-fi? Yes. 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 It, it is. Especially with the whole, like, artificially created element. Because I feel like in many ways that trope comes up as a way to kind of have slavery as a plot line without acknowledging how real slavery happened. Because when it's that, or like, oh no, robots achieve, achieve sentience, and now we have to think of them as people. Whoops, we didn't mean to enslave them. We just, we didn't realize they were autonomous. It's like a whoopsie slavery. Like, if you're actually going to do a story about slavery and about rebellion from slavery, deal with the realities of slavery. Somebody came and took your rights away. And I feel like this sci-fi trope is a coward's way of doing it. By trying to make it more sci-fi-ish and being like, oh, but they created this thing and like, oh, do they have the right to this? Like, these are these are questions that have been explored. And I don't think there's much juice left in them, to be completely honest. 
A while back, I read a book uh, that was about a retired Roman soldier joining a trading expedition to the Baltic trade uh, with the unknown tribes there. The leader of the trade mission is a Phoenician. That I, I, ho I might be pronouncing that rightly. I might not be. Uh, sea trader who cheats people several times, also frequently prioritizes profit over not risking his crew's lives. Ains ancient Phoenicia is now... Mostly inside the state of Israel, their language was related to Hebrew. Do you think that's close enough to make it a depiction like that anti-Semitic? I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel that's my call to make. What I will say is, even if it is, it's probably going to go over the head of most readers because I don't, unless it is pointed out in the book itself, most people don't know that. Don't know that um, that ancient culture or location is now uh, inside of the state of Israel. Like, that's not common knowledge. Most people are never going to know and never going to make that connection. Does that make it not anti-Semitic? Not necessarily. Depends on the specifics. But again, I do not feel qualified to make a call on that. <clears throat> I saw your short on body swapping. I was actually thinking about this again recently myself. If you have a universe where souls don't exist and a body swap is just copying person A's brain state to person B and vice versa, in this case, person A feels like the person B, but really there's still person A just with person B's memories and neural pathways. Like when the brain states are switched back, person A will feel like they have the memories of being in person's B body and then come back to their own body. But those are false memories or more specifically, their person B's memories of being memory. Their person B's memories when person B thought they were person A. The upshot of this is that it's never person A doing anything in person B's body, but instead it's person B doing things in person B's body with person A's memories and neural patterns. I feel like you're splitting hairs. Like... Okay, so souls don't exist, but like functionally, you're still taking the mind state and moving it from one to the other and then back. So I don't get how you're coming to the conclusion you do. I feel like you're trying to legalize your way out of the actual nature of a body swap. Because if your conclusion is correct, well then for all intents and purposes, a body swap never actually happened. Two people just had a delusional state for a little bit. And then it's not a body swap anymore then it's something else. And I don't know what to think of that. That's assuming I even understood the question. I might not. Prisoner, the prisoner, favorite number two. I, mm, I go back and forth between um, the one from, oh crap, what is it? Um, I really like the one in Chimes of Big Ben. And I really like the one in, ah, what is, damn it, what's the name of that episode? Hang on. Checking. Um, Dance of the Dead. I like that one too. Those are both really good. Doctor Who, do you have any thoughts on Donna's original departure or how RT, RTD2 will try to fix it? Her original departure was beautifully tragic. I don't know how he'll try to fix it. I think what the thing is, is it'll be very difficult for him to do it in a way that it doesn't feel just hand wavy. Uh, and if he does that, the immediate question is going to come up. Well, why didn't you fix it earlier? So... I mean, like, the actual answer is he wasn't show running anymore. Moffat didn't have any interest in dealing with it, etc. Like, there are logistical answers. But what's the Watsonian answer for that? And if it's not a hand wave, I'll be curious to see what it is. I don't know what it'll do. I'm trying to get back into reading sci-fi. Uh, you had to recommend one LGBT... Um, sci one LGBT plus sci-fi novel, what would it be? Preferably on the gothic end of things. I am not as well read as you might think I am. I do not have a suggestion off the top of my head for that. Um, suggestions in chat. 
Do you think the Timeless Child cliffhanger Chibnall left with the fob watch will ever be addressed? If not, why do you believe Chibnall left it in there? Um, no, I don't, or at least not for a very long time, because I have a hard time believing that too many creators would want to touch that thing, just given how toxic the fan response was, if nothing else, even if they thought they had an idea of what to do with it. Why do I believe he left it in? I think I think he thought he was leaving new strands for future writer, future writers to pull um but he didn't he just didn't finish his own story. I think I he continues to claim that he told the story he wanted to tell and he finished telling his story. If that is true, then Chris Chibnall and I have fundamental different concepts of what telling a story means, of what it means to tell and finish a story. And we have irreconcilable differences in how we define those things. Um, I've watched Flash Gordon for the first time this weekend. It occurred to me how much the female lead is being forced to marry the villain, but it saved at the last minute has become a cliche since then. Why do you think that trope is so overused? I mean, it's just uh, it's just a variant of damsel in distress, and damsel in distress as a literary device is old as storytelling. So it's overused because it's well ingrained in a lot of culture. Do you think Bill Mark claims to be? Why do you think Bill Mark claims to be a Democrat despite all of his conservative views? Because he's a fool. He is a fool with no. Um, Self-reflection. That's why. All right, I'm back in the main chat. Um, let's see. Okay, we've got some new super chats. Uh, let's see. Lewis Ward. Gonna head out for the night and have a good one. Oh, well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, our philosophy is, will BBC pull Unearthly Child affect other Doctor Who? I don't know. I doubt it. Um... But we'll see. I actually, without getting into the whole freaking thing, because again, video out tomorrow, hopefully. But I, I expect that this not carrying of the, um, of the um, unearthly child on BBC iPlayer, I ultimately expect that to be temporary. Um, I think if they weren't trying to get everything up there in time for the 60th, I think that this whole thing would just delay until this got sorted. Um, I think the only reason they're putting up without it is because it's going to get a boost with the upcoming 60th, and they're going to take the hit. Have I been to many sci-fi conventions? I've been to a few. Vermont Comic Con used to have... Um, like I'm going to lump together uh, comic conventions with sci-fi. I haven't technically... Um, the only sci-fi specific ones I've been to are Gallifrey 1, which I've been to twice. I used to do the Vermont Comic Con back when that was still a thing. It no longer is. I've been to Terrificon, which was quite fun. And I've been to Rose City Comic Con, which was also a lot of fun. My favorite number two is Many Happy Returns. I do like that number two, but... What I love about that episode isn't the number two, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see. The part that I missed about Good Omens was the bit about how any record left in a car long <laughs> enough turned into a copy of Queen's Greatest Hits. Yeah, I remember that bit too. I feel like season two kind of had a nod to that with the, um, uh, the, is it Buddy Holly? Every day it's a getting closer. Like, it gave a justification for that, but I, that felt like at least down its initial premise, kind of a nod to that. You didn't read that part, but do you agree it's obvious what's going to happen in a sci-fi story if someone makes a slave race? Well, yeah. Yeah. First of all, they're the bad guys immediately and automatically. Second of all, the slave race will rise up. Or if they don't, that will be the abject lesson for some stupid reason. I haven't been to a sci-fi con since forever. I haven't been uh, to a fur con uh, at all yet. I've not been to a fur con. I have um, furries that I know who have and enjoyed it greatly. 
uh, ever encountered Wellington Paranormal. It's the same universe as to, uh, what we do in the shadows. Ooh, I got it. I've t told people before, don't, don't, don't do abbreviations. Don't do that. <laughs> My brain doesn't work like that. Lots of fun, casually progressive too. Um, I haven't encountered that. Um, you're not exactly selling it to me by telling me it's the same universe as what we do in the shadows because I haven't watched that and I'm not really compelled to either. Oh boy, you've got Hammer into Anvil next. Well, next to be released. We've already seen it and recorded the um, episode on it. It's just not out yet. So you folks have Hammer into Anvil next. I have moved past it. Ugh. Dharma, re-upping support. Remember, 22 months. My goodness. Happy anniversary, Vera. Thank you. Do I like raspberries? I, it would be very strange that I'm eating them if I didn't. Even though I'm the most vanilla cishet person you'll ever meet, the othering and gaslighting I got as a kid has drawn me to other people who have been othered. I That's good. Because, like, the thing is, you don't have to be queer, you know, trans, bi, pan, gay, whatever, to be able to have empathy and be supportive of that community or maybe even find a place um within aspects of it do i plan to attend gallifrey one you <sighs> words do you plan to attend gallifrey one in 2024 yes indeed i do uh that reminds me hang on sorry doing this thing where I need to check something while I'm thinking of it. Um, okay. Cool. Alright, that's fine. Supreme Omega back in with the Super Chat. Thoughts on Steven Spielberg? Do you feel he's unfairly typecast as the big family-friendly director? Because he can do stuff like Minority Court and, Mun and Munich. Um, it is a little bit odd that he's uh, generally believed to be some family-friendly director. Given, you know, like Indiana Jones, especially those early ones, like they, they went rough sometimes. You know, so not even just the stuff that, that you mentioned. I think part of it is that a lot of the stuff he produced, and this would have been the 80s and the 90s, were incredibly family friendly. Because, like, he was a um, a producer and his name was attached to stuff like Tiny Toons and Animaniacs and The Goonies. And I think, in some ways, that did more to impact people's thoughts and image of him more than his own actual directing filmography did uh if that makes any sense there are too many <laughs> acronyms and fandoms and government organizations whatever internet shorthand is trending these days tma too many acronyms i had oh god i i keep like whenever i look into stuff that is related to what i do for a living and it's like tips for this or help with this or hey have you considered this and they're using all these freaking acronyms and i'm like i have to look up what the hell that means apparently everybody else who does what i do as a living can like somehow hold all this nonsense in their head i can't so he directed schindler's list he did but like also first Jurassic park was pg-13 people got eaten by dinosaurs on screen so huh
Hi there, by the way, today, October 17th, 2023, is the canonical date of Tony Stark using the Infinity Gauntlet to decimate Thanos' forces in Avengers Endgame, which would also make it his death day. F's in chat for Tony Stark. Schindler's List is, is not family friendly, nor is Saving Private Ryan for that matter. Right, Carp Pumpkin? Yep, every year. Sorry for the initials. It's okay, Seal. I'm not mad at you. Like, I, I just, I have to remind people. <laughs> not good for my brain. Jaws was PG. This is because PG-13 didn't exist back then. PG in the 70s could go quite hard. Like, 70s PG could be a hard PG-13 these days. I rewatched Raiders very recently. I don't know if I ever previously spotted the Tibetan character who's clearly played by a white guy. There's some of that sprinkled around. Temple of Doom is still PG. Well, it's because the MPAA doesn't go back and rewrite them just because the rating system changed. Temple of Doom is one of the reasons we have PG-13 as a rating. Um, So... You know, it, they're not going to go back and redo it. The other day I found how my brother's kid was sick when I was really drunk. I thought, I'm not sure. I'm really worried she might die. I only see her every other week. Then next day I worried properly. But am I bad for having a thought? For having that thought? Um, no, like we, we've kind of talked about this before 255, like you're not bad for your thoughts for me, from my perspective, I don't, I'm tr not trying to get bogged down into the weeds of, um, uh, philosophy here, but I'm a consequentialist. I'm not going to say that what you think or what you believe or what's in your heart doesn't matter at all, but it is vastly secondary to what you do. So you're not a bad, from my perspective, you're not a bad person for your thoughts. You're not a bad person for your instincts. You're not a bad person if you have a non-ideal gut reaction to something. It's what you do following that that can be good or bad. It's what actions you take based on that thought. So like, this is something that, that freaking, I can't think of a better example, but like white people get really hung up on, you know, oh my God, I I like turned around and I, and I saw this, this black man and I got, I was very scared all of a sudden, but then I felt so bad because that was a racist thought of mine. You're not bad for a racist thought. If you had that thought, recognize it, confront it, try and do better next time. If you turn around and went, oh my God, don't touch me, you horrible, horrible black person, then you'd be a bad person because of the actions you took as a result of that thought. If you maced an innocent man, yes, then you're a bit of a bad person, but you're not bad for your thoughts. And I have to believe that because there are there are people who live around me that I know don't think well of me. But I don't think they're bad people as long as they're not doing anything wicked with those thoughts. You don't have to like me. You don't have to think I'm a good person. You don't have to think LGBTQIA plus people are good. Just don't. Be an asshole. Don't do asshole things. Don't strip people's rights away. You don't have to like us. Your thoughts aren't the problem. Your actions are the problem. <clears throat> it was also the first time I watched it since you did your favorite film scores. Yeah, you're completely right about that part of the desert chase. Thank you, Rowan. Thank you very much. Once again, Vera missed her calling as a therapist. I don't have the spoons to be anybody's therapist other than my own. 
and occasionally do my best to help other people with my untrained ramblings. These are my thoughts. These are my notions. Ultimately, I do not know what I'm talking about. So I will give you my opinions and my thoughts and they are, whatever I share will be true of me at the time I say it. But I'm not a infinite font of knowledge. I finally have my bottom surgery consult this week. Looks like I'll be able to get it done in April. Yay! That's great, Louise. Congratulations. I actually get hung up on seeing a black teenager who looked angry and getting angry. Like, again. And, and getting scared. Again, like, your thoughts aren't, aren't the problem. It's what you do with them. So, when you have a thought that could lead to destructive behavior, do your best to recognize that and do not act destructively off that thought. But the thought's just the thought. So. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up there, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, how much is a commission review on your Patreon cost? Depends on what you're commissioning. $60 gets you two episodes of a TV show or a movie. Um, if you want a book, that's $100. Um, I might even have to raise that up even higher because honestly, I get so bogged down by the book stuff. Um, but that's what it's at right now. And um, although I might have turned that one off temporarily until I'm caught up on the books, I actually can't remember if I did that or not. I know I thought about it. But anyways, yeah, $60 is the base level. If you want me to say, like, watch an entire season of television, that's going to run you quite a bit more. They're all in tiers on the Patreon. Probably talked about this in some previous chat, but I usually don't manage to catch them, so sorry if you've already said this before. Did you ever do a reaction to The Prince? I did a review on The Break Room of Geeks. So if you go to The Break Room of Geeks, you'll find it there. Ah, oh. oh, okay. I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you, everybody. Do I review video games? Um, if you're asking on commission, potentially, um, message me about it, and it depends on the uh, expected length of the video game. That's probably also gonna run you a hundred. But if you want to commission me to review a video game. Message me about it, and we'll talk. But unless it is a game that I can wrap up in four hours or less, I'm going to say that's got to be at the $100 tier. Anyways, ah, thank you, everybody, for joining me. I hope you all have a great rest of the week. Uh, tomorrow, I will hopefully have a video out on the stuff going on with Doctor Who and the um, rights conflicts with... Um, an unearthly child. Um, and tomorrow I will also be on Twitch again. I'm going to try out Cozy Grove. We'll see what I think of that. And, um, Saturday, um, Saturday's video might be up in the air in terms of what I'm doing, but there'll be a video on Saturday. So, yay. <laughs> Have a good night. <sighs> Just remember that you are beautiful. You are valid and you are loved. You are the council and I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. McCavity!